Alexa, turn on the shop lights. Okay. Alexa, start the Healy. Hmm, I found a few skills that might help. Did you mean healing sounds by Healing FM? How about relaxing sounds, healing music? I also found healing spa. Do you want that one? Alexa, stop. All right. Well, that almost worked. We were on a roll there for a second, but uh, it looks like it's up to me to start this car. Alexa's no help. I guess technology just hasn't come as far as I thought it had. I thought Amazon had found a way. We left off with the intake, the exhaust, from the engine all the way to the bumper done, fuel pump wired, coil in, plugs, pretty much everything done, ready for a battery, and really just an extra set of hands to help us get this thing going. Oh, and that magical piece that I hope I haven't lost already, the oil pipe is somewhere around here. Uh-oh, we may be in trouble. Oh, God. If I were an oil pipe, where would I be? Hmm. No. I feel like I'm getting colder. <sighs> well, this is the problem with leaving projects sitting for weeks. <sighs> Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Nope. And nope. Mm hmm. Bunch of receipts. Hmm. Nope. We're striking out left and right here. Maybe it's in the envelope. Maybe I took it back in the house. Hmm. Nope. Nope again. I swear it was sitting right here last I saw it. Uh, check the box of parts. Box of parts. Ah! Yes. Let's get this installed. Let's get a battery on it. And I got it in for the coil wire now. That was the second piece we needed. Fits well, just like all of the other Moss Motors parts have fit on this car. All right. So the pipe comes from the gauge inside the car, out here. So now we need just about, now we, we need a couple inches of rubber hose. Rubber hose that I did not pick up because I thought I had plenty. I've got quarter inch. I think I needed 3 16 to make this work, right? Hmm. Yep, I need some, I need some very, very tiny fuel line. Let me keep looking. Ah, even that's not small enough. Come on. Since we're lacking the rubber tube to make this connection final, I'll have to pick up a rubber tube tomorrow. Just one more, one more day of delays. Not a big deal, but for now we'll throw a battery in here because we're going to need that. And I have it. Super start 5,000. So we are gonna hook this car up in a positive ground configuration because that starter just seems to be happier that way. And that'll, that'll make sure the amp meter runs correctly. Uh, I think you can convert the car the other way. You can hook the battery up incorrectly. The starter will spin the right direction. The car will run, the headlights will work but your amp meter will run backwards and it will always show when it's charging that it's discharging the engine. So uh, I really don't see an advantage to hooking it up 
in a negative ground versus a positive at this point. So this seems weird, but we're gonna run the positive battery terminal to the back of the engine block and then the ground off of the battery. And at O'Reilly's, I tried to buy just a ground strap because I'd like to run a separate ground from the engine to the, to the chassis somewhere. Since it's all rubber isolated through all the motor mounts, um, really the only ground it's got is probably through the exhaust pipe and the drive shaft. So I think it's best just to give that battery a, a more direct path to the frame. So I picked up an extra long ground cable and, uh, well, let me back up. The shortest cable I could buy at O'Reilly's that has an eye on both ends was like 48 inches long. One, that's ridiculous for a ground cable. I don't think it should ever be that long. And two, uh, what the hell? Like I need a six inch piece. They didn't sell one, so I bought an extra long ground cable and a pair of lugs. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make my own. I'm gonna cut off the this 8, 10, 12 inches, whatever I think I need to make it clean. This just has to go to the terminal from the ground to the terminal. So I'll measure that, make, make somewhat of a clean. I'll give myself some excess in here. Uh, make a clean connection there, and then I'll cut the excess to make a ground strap. And I'll ground the engine, like I said, somewhere to the frame rail. Um, so we can get that done now. Well, it's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but it's by far the ugliest cramp I've ever seen. And now we got our ground strap. I'm not sure where I'm gonna run this yet. I'll probably get under the car. I think the factory one had it coming off the transmission somewhere over to the frame rail. I'll do something similar to that underneath the car. The day has finally come, the hour's upon us. Uh, we've hooked up a couple wires. As you can see, a battery and a positive in a, in a ground wire in here now. Ignore the weirdness with the battery colors. It is hooked up properly with a negative ground. <laughs> and I just wired the voltage regulator. And I think we might have a lot of this hooked up. So if you look here, I uh, temporary to wire to the coil. We got 12.53 volts right there. And we're gonna try to crank this thing and just see what happens. We know it cranks because we tested that in the last video, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we just bolted the carburetor on, the uh, carbonator. Yep, we did our, our first and only install of the carburetor. I'm crossing my fingers. We don't have to take anything <laughs> apart. <laughs> oh man, this is sketchy. <clears throat> well, I guess first things first, we need to check for spark. So... And we just essentially hot-wired the thing. We just ran power <laughs> right to the coil. Don't shock me. So coil. this is our ignition switch right now. Yes. That is, that is true. <laughs> and a uh, fuel pump comes out of the bottom here. And maybe we'll just use that clip to hold the fuel pump on yeah. eventually. Uh, go ahead and hit it, let's watch the bolt run. Yeah. Let's make sure, at, let's see if we have spark <laughs> Okay, spark and before then, fuel? Yeah, and then we still have to wire the plugs and everything, but we can try okay. that. Sparky, Sparky. I'll bring it in a little closer. It looked like we had lots of spark. That was good. Uh, let's uh, fuel the pump. Oh, we'll put the plug in and don't shock me. <laughs> no. uh, where, what wire goes where? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the longest one goes to number one. Wait, really? Yeah. That's what oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I believe they go, I, I put them in order by the length. Okay. But let me grab the firing order. I thought it was somewhere on the intake. Yep, it is. Firing order one, three, four, two. So this is one. Yep. Next one should be three. Oh. I guess we'll find out real fast if we get a psh. And then four. Interesting. And then two. I think I've got that rotation down correctly. All right. Hey man, uh, we got a 50% chance of success. Yes, sir. Well, I'll yeah. take that. I'll take that bet. I'll take those odds. Okay. <clears throat> so, fuel pump. And we're gonna try yeah. it. Watch the watch the filter, see it fill up. You should uh, camerize that. Get close. Throw that on the 
Riser. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Prime instantly. Is it? Is it full? It's filling. Hopefully the line doesn't pop. Let me know if I need to yank this fuel out of there. We have squirt already. We already have accelerator. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, you do. Okay, crank it. Ready? What do we got to lose? Make hold on. Let me locate the fire extinguisher. You got a fire extinguisher? That's good. Fire extinguisher located. What's well, party? We're ready to run. Ouch. Oh, that's why you're using these. <laughs> yeah. Should have started by now. Timing could be way off. That's true. I mean, uh, I'm fuel. Okay, let's try that. I'm just listen for a pop and a bang. Okay. Hopefully, no fire in my face. All right, here we go. Something does not seem right. Yeah. We should at least have some sputtering. I would assume at least one of these should fire. Because we know we have fuel. And we mm -hmm. definitely have coil power. And we have some spark. Oh, our coil wire fell out. Oh, that's going to shock you. It just starts instantly. Ready? Yep. It starts! <laughs> it tried. Okay, here we go. Oh, Tiny. Uh, we'll go that way. Okay. Whoa. A little too advanced, so... Bring it back, bring it back. Okay. We don't have... I was like, what's our kill switch again? <laughs> I think our firing order might be a little out. It might be. Or the distributor could be 180 off. Eh, true. All right, so trying. Okay. It's definitely like fighting itself. Yeah. Yeah, all that backfiring tells me it's out. Are out of order. Okay. Yep. One, three, four, two. Try it again? Try it again. All right. If this doesn't work, we'll have to pull the distributor and rotate it 180 it. degrees. Yeah. yeah. It smells like a fresh engine in here. <laughs> it sure does. That thing does smell. All right, here we go. Here is pump and coil. We're good? I think we're good. Let's try. Here we go. That's a rocker, it sounds like. Okay, I was like, uh, it's in the top end. I was like, something was... Some, yeah, it was hitting, hitting that. The, rock, yeah. the cover. That was a tick, 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 tick. Whatever it is, it was timed perfectly. It started trying to scream. Hmm. Well, let's try it without. <laughs> oh, man. We're going full genius mode. Oil's <laughs> going everywhere. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Check for extreme lash. I don't know if this has flat tappets or if this is like a hydraulic. I doubt it's a hydraulic. No. So maybe just be, I don't know. Be quick. Here we go. Why does it sound, it sound like bottom end? Bottom endy. Uh, um, that really sounds like something's slapping like a, it a, a thin piece of metal. It does. It doesn't sound like a connecting rod or right. a main bearing. Right. It sounds like like a connecting rod hitting the oil pan. Maybe, but it also sounds like it's coming out of the top. It's real tricky. Whatever's going on here. Yeah, this definitely sounds yeah. up top. 
do. Well, at least it runs and it sounds really <clears throat> cool. Like it's it's a smooth engine, other than that tick. It really is. Yeah. I was surprised. Yeah, it runs too well. That's kind of why I feel like I want to save it. Yeah, I know, I know. It's really good. Huh. Well, let's fire it one more time. I'm gonna get a dowel rod or something <laughs> to listen. I'm curious. All right. I won't be able to sleep unless I find answers. Yep. Well, I, I know I said if this engine was junk, we were gonna yank it, but this it's so simple to work on. All right, there's one more thing I wanna check. It looks like we can get the car in the air and pull that pan off. We can, pull, we can drop the oil pan. There's no cross member underneath it. I'm sure they did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll drop the oil pan and just wiggle all the journals, check them. Yeah. I don't think we'll pull sure. any caps off, but I suppose. I suppose we could, but right there. Yeah. Maybe we could throw a set of main and rod bearings in it. Yeah. Without even pulling the engine out. Just leave the pistons where they're at. Did we put this pan on or was it on <clears> for a long time? Uh, this pan's always been on. Okay. Yep. I think I might have pulled it once just to inspect some things. I know we took the pan off. I'm pretty positive we took a couple mains and Rod caps off just to look at the bearings and they all looked good. Huh. Well, all right. But it, it kind of does some bent roddy to me. Yeah. But bent rods usually show themselves on D-cell. Like you rev the engine and as soon as you let off, you'll hear the, the rod knocking. I don't think they typically show up on acceleration. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. While the engine's on, under load. This is all the time, which makes me think there's just something and it sounds very high pitched and, and, and like tinny, not necessarily a deep thunking or not necessarily a deep thudding sound. Like, yeah, clunk. Like something hitting the block. It sounds like something's hitting a pan, like a valve cover or an oil pan. Kind of does. It's so, interesting. But these blocks could be very thin. They could be misleading. It's true. There's about eight bolts holding that oil pan on. Is a good thing. No, oh, that's true. And it Easy. drops straight down. <sighs> Well, it runs great. <laughs> it's very smooth. Yeah, it really it's, is. You know, I'm still calling this a win. Yeah, it runs. It runs. I was like, what are you, it's not really that bad. <laughs> was, the car is together and I we, said, we didn't have the parts or anything to run this on a stand before, unfortunately. Like, obviously the whole fuel injection system just got here. I mean, fuel system. Yep. So, couldn't have been tested, could not have been foreseen. And you know, I said, if this engine is junk, I'm replacing it. Right. I don't know, do we classify this I engine? I don't know if it's junk. junk? I, unfortunately, <laughs> I really like it now. It's, that's, uh, it's nice. Hearing how smooth it was, yeah. kind of reinvigorated me to, <laughs> to make it for run. Yep. Maybe go the extra, extra mile to give it the best case, the best odds. Plus everything else for this engine is new. There's a lot of money in this thing now. Yeah, there kind of is. Yep. Yeah, there's kind of about a, a thousand bucks just uh, sitting. Uh, yeah, it's like there's a thousand dollars. Just yeah. bolted onto it. Yep. Uh, well, what are you gonna do? You uh, you can't win them all. And you can't predict the future. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. And uh, just, just keep on going, you know. And that's all right. I can take a punch. I've been hit before and I'll, I'm going to hit back. I think uh, this afternoon I'm going to drop that oil pan and see what's going on in there. I'll bring you guys along to check that out. I, uh, I got to thinking about it and maybe there's an oil pump pickup tube that might have gotten put in incorrectly, routed wrong, and maybe it's just a rod or, or the crank. 
rubbing against the oil pump pickup tube. Maybe it's, I don't know, it could be something very simple. Cause I, we did have that paying off and I think we pulled a main cap and our, a rod cap just to look at them. Uh, and we assessed, there was very little wear on the bearings. They'd been replaced at one point, I believe. Uh, so we put it back together and threw some paint on it and sent it. I'm not calling this a failure. I'm not calling it junk yet. Uh, Got to check a couple more boxes before we can fulfill that. Well, when I when I introduced the car, I think I said in four videos it would run, and I, this would be video number four on the Healy. So I met my obligation. Uh, sorry, it's not running well. Sorry, I'm not driving it around the block. I still think this was a win. I said it. I said it once today, and I'm saying it again. This was a win. The motor runs. Uh, a little knock doesn't bother me. I've been wrenching long enough to know that I can pull this engine apart and rebuild it with a dingle ball hone, some assembly lube, and some rock auto parts for probably 200 bucks. So not really worried about that. Uh, but that just wasn't the original plan. But like I said, there's so much money just bolted onto this engine and so much time trying to make it run. I think I got to do that extra step pull the paint off, throw bearings in it if it needs it, give it one last chance, one last fighting chance. So, well, thanks for watching the four videos on the Healy. If you haven't done that already, uh, click back through my video history. It's only been, I've only been making videos for about a month now. So my video quality, my production quality is still maybe a little low. I'm still learning a lot. I appreciate your patience. All the comments have been very nice and I appreciate you guys' support. I truly enjoy this stuff. This is this is a hobby for me. It's also a stress reliever. Uh, my garage therapy is needed, and uh, I feel like I do enough cool stuff. And I feel like if someone's willing to watch it with me, that just gives me more of a reason to come out here and do it. So thanks for the motivation. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ouch. Yep.